Hey guys, it's a beautiful day, and I'm back by the stump. It is a really beautiful day. It's Thursday right now, but that might not mean anything by the time you see this, so whatever. So, viewer request. Viewer request video number one of the day that I'm filming, actually. So, the Gerber Pack Hatchet. There's a light fixed wing overhead. Hmm. Anyway, the Gerber Pack Hatchet. So been asked a couple times take a look at this guy it's uh it's I mean it's small it's pack sized um, now we don't have anything that says anything about what kind of steel it comes from it's not a made in America version or not American made product anyway uh, some Gerbers are some are not we have some product highlights um, one thing that I think is cool is they, they want you to know it's full tank. There's no reason for that to be out besides for you to look and physically see this is a full tank hatchet. So that's cool. We got that going for us. Not incredibly thick. Why don't I open it and take it out of the package before we start looking at all that stuff, huh? Here is the hatchet itself. Really? Oh, it's dirt. It had some dirt in it. I thought it came with rust already. That was not fun. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more careful so I don't cut into the nylon of the sheath it comes with. So we'll look at the sheath as usual first. We've got our do not eat. Simple sheath, um, riveted together. We've got a little, you can carry it by that handle or you can uh, just sling it onto some gear, clip it on. You've got belt loops, one a little bit smaller than the other, but they're there. Um, minimally reinforced on the inside in terms of rigidity, but There you go. Solid Velcro. I mean, that'll hold. Okay. We looked at the sheath. Looking at the thing itself. A really nice stonewash finish on the blade. I like that. Not covered in oil, so that's cool. I think it said stainless steel on there. A little laser etch of the logo. At first, you know, in the package, I wasn't sure if these were, uh, like it said, gro finger grooves there. I wasn't sure what these were. I thought maybe they'd give you some wire strippers or something, but looking at it heads on now, it's way too thick to do anything with. So I don't know if that's like real big jimping or whatnot. But you you can choke up on this axe head for whatever reason. I guess if you put a real fine edge on it, you can use it for some skinning or just real good control of the blade. Um, rubberized handle, so you've got kind of a polymer handle with rubber, rubber, bleh, bleh, bleh. I get out for a little bit of sun, I lose my damn mind. Polymer handle with a little bit of rubber over mold on it to give you a nice secure grip. Um, good for hand size, you know, big or small. Uh, it, it's actually pretty comfortable width wise. Um, not too big, not too small. Very nice. Good leverage for its size. I guess, you know, I have a little concern about how thin that, that piece of metal is, but, you know, it's a, it's a pack hatchet. It's, it's not like a log split or whatever. I, I'd like it to be a little bit bigger, but that would add considerable weight, too. It's a decent weight. You can still get some good leverage. Um, you know, get a nice swing. It's a, it's a pretty decent balance, good size of weight as a small hatchet goes. Um, I guess we need to get some pieces of wood here though and just get right into cutting stuff up. Actually, before we do that, let's just check the edge out. Let's see now, normally, you know, if you know or you don't know, um, an ax and a hat or a hatchet is not gonna have a razor sharp edge. It's just not. And because the power doesn't come from that blade, the power comes from your, your swing and your chop and stuff. But I'm just curious as to how sharp it is. Now, we're not going to do a pull-through for sure, but can we do, like, a slice, I wonder? Um, no. Eh, but... That's not bad. Um, and, it I mean, the edge is finished nicely to where if you wanted to refine that edge a little bit, it would be very easy to take a fine stone and um, you could make that much sharper than it is. Now, warning, with something like this, where you're doing a lot of chopping and brute force, 
the thinner and finer you make that that cutting edge. Is that a train? Do we have trains? What the hell was that? Anyway, the, <laughs> the thinner and finer you make that cutting edge, the more likely it is to chip or break um, through some of the harder work. So that's why axes don't come with those razor sharp, you know, edges and stuff. But you definitely have the potential to do that if this is a tool you might use for some of that kind of work. You know, I've seen people do amazing fine work, uh, you know, debarking trees and actually carving and stuff with small hatchets like this. I don't have that skill or talent anywhere in my body at all, but it can be done. Let's just take a small piece of wood here. Horrible safety purpose demonstration I'm doing here. Let's get one of these guys up here. That's pretty good. Pretty clean cut. I'm not sure. I guess this is the cut side. Not bad. The only problem with Mr. Stumpy here is that it's on an angle. So things tend to not want to just stand up nicely on their own. If I want to say chop them. But let's see what we can do here. We can get a pretty good cut into it. And then if we have something like this to baton with, I wish I had gloves out here, I should, but I don't. Yeah. I mean, not a, a really hard amount of work. It's a, like I said, a small hatchet but just to break up some small pieces, make some firewood and stuff. There we go. Gives you some a decent amount of power in a small little package. Now, I don't think that the standard use for something like this would be splitting large pieces like this. It would be cutting up the smaller stuff into things that you would use for fire. But I mean, the point is you could use it to take your slightly larger pieces and um, cut them down to size pretty easily. You want to go inside? Okay. We've already done some work on the edge, but now if I wanted to use this to get my fire started, I'm not going to make a nice pretty feather stick, but I mean, I could absolutely use it to uh, cut down some wood. Now, why I would be using this instead of like a bushcraft type knife, I don't know. But I'm just demonstrating what you could do with it. Again, with a little bit of sharpening, I mean, you could carve through a lot of different material very easily with this thing. but. We've got some pretty decent fire starting material right there. Not picking up on any hot spots, on any soreness, you know, anywhere using it. Um, I really, I haven't used any of these grooves except for that very specific choke up stuff. It's very comfortable to hold down here. I thought these might get in the way a little bit, might cause a little bit of discomfort, but really, um, no, it, it doesn't at all. So if I was just out and about doing some camping, was gonna start a fire, and I wasn't throwing wood at the camera or my face. Um, between its ability to make these nice basic fire size pieces and uh, with just a little bit of work here, get those nice feathery pieces going so that we could use them to start the fire. Um, I think it's a decent buy. I think it really depends on how much you're gonna pay. I can't remember off the top of my head right here what I paid for it. Um, I'd have to look it up. And of course there'll be text in the video as to exactly what I paid for it. Um, but. For your basic needs and uses, this will get you through. I mean, I'm sure it will. Don't see why not. I don't know if this would be my first choice. I might want something with a slightly longer handle, just a little bit more leverage, just a little bit. But for size and weight and cutting ability, 
Um, we still have to, I still have to look up what kind of steel it is, talk about corrosion resistance, um, and, you know, maintaining the edge and everything. But, I, I don't know, it's not a fan of all things Gerber, but when Gerber does something right, Gerber does something right. And I think this is pretty good. I'm happy with this little guy. Yeah, I really don't have any complaints about this. Not at all. So, I believe it was in the, you know, 20 to $25 range. I'm not sure. I think it would be worth it. Uh, in terms of, again, size, weight, power, you know, I'll, I'll have to put some text in after I look up the steel and everything. A lot of times Gerber doesn't want you to know exactly what steel it's made of, but... <laughs> Um, this has done this has done pretty well right out of the box right out of the package anyway um, good performer poor stump I need a new stump pretty soon so so that's the end of my little evaluation of it and my looking at it now it's your turn what do you guys think what did you see that you liked what did you see that you didn't like um, anybody have real world experience that they want to share with us this Seems like something I'd be interested in taking on our summer camping trip. I, as always, as usually I should say, as most often, I will throw a link for this uh, on the Amazon Influencer page under uh, hatchets and axes and saws and stuff. If you're interested in one, I'll try to find the cheapest deal I can find on Amazon for you and put it in there. There'll be a link to the Influencer page in the video description, along with all the other links in the video description. So another viewer request done. I got the coolest package, by the way. I got a package from a viewer with a present in it. You guys just see that really soon. Really awesome. I will just say that I may be I may be switching hats real soon. We'll leave it at that. Uh, anyway, we're going to leave this at that. So I'd like to hear your comments, thoughts, opinions, and such. Okay. Well, you guys all know that I think you are all absolutely awesome. You all know that I appreciate every single one of you. And... I will be back again with another viewer request real soon.